Uh, Cody writes in and he says this, and this is an interesting take. And this is a this is a common take, by the way. I would say that this is this is not just Solberg. This is this is ninety five percent, if not more, ninety nine percent of Christendom, and and anyone, even even Messianics and Hebrew rooters, oftentimes take this view. And this is the view. This is what Cody says. Solberg claimed in another video that because the Levitical priesthood, which is in the which is in the law, passed away, therefore all of it is fulfilled. Okay. So in other words, Solberg is claiming as much of Christendom does that since the Levitical priesthood has, has been, uh, has been, been done away with that, uh, the rest of the Torah has been done away with as well. This is where Rob and I, uh, take a much different stand than most of Christendom. And that is, I don't believe that the Levitical priesthood has been done away with. In fact, I think if you look in uh, Ezekiel, at the end of Ezekiel, there is a temple. The, pr the prince is in the, uh, is in the temple. He's acting as the high priest, right? Um, this, and we see this also like in uh, the end of uh, Zechariah 14, right? They go up to the temple to celebrate Sukkot, which, invo which involves uh, sacrifices. Ezekiel says that there will be uh, sin sacrifices done again, right? So I don't think that the Levitical priesthood has been done away with. Most uh, Christians take this from their uh, reading of the book of Hebrews. However, I believe that the book of Hebrews is talking about the high priesthood and how Yeshua is the high priest. There's a lot that goes into this. My father wrote a wonderful commentary on the book of Hebrews, which explains a lot of this and I think uh, is, is well done. And, and you can go look at this. The word covenant in, in a lot of the text of the, of the Hebrews passages in eight and nine is, is supplied for you by your translators. It's not actually there. And so I think if read in context, it can be argued very well by many people, including my father, that uh, the text is actually talking about the high priesthood and how Yeshua is the high priest that goes into the heavenly temple. Now, some might argue, well, clearly it says that the priesthood is passing away or the high priesthood at least is passing away in the, in the texts of Hebrews. If we take that view, which I'm still not, I'm still not uh, going to take that view. I think that the text is actually saying something else. Uh, but if we take the view that the high priesthood is passing away, then what, then we could argue that, th that what is being said is that Yeshua will be the high priest in the coming temple. And we see this, especially if we accept that the prince in the, in the Ezekiel passage is, in fact, Yeshua. So he takes the place of the high priest. And that means that the high priest is still, the function of the high priest is still there. It's just done by Yeshua, right? So it's not that the, that the priesthood has, is no more. It's that the true high priest actually takes his position as the high priest. Now, I said, if you take that position, I don't take that position. Uh, I take the position that whatever was happening when the book of Hebrews was being written, the priesthood was actually coming to an end. Whether or not the book of Hebrews is written before or after the destruction of the temple, I think the writer of the Hebrews is seeing that the end of that physical priesthood is imminent because the temple is going away. Yeah, and, and it's the same... Remember that God told his prophets that the Solomon's temple would be destroyed. You know, I mean, and exactly and we know that Jeremiah prophesied about the Brit Hadashah, the new covenant, while Solomon's temple was still standing. Right. I mean, that Jeremiah 31 was written with, by from a prophet who knew that the existing structure was passing away. And he wanted to encourage his people and he knew that there was going to be the exile. Well, right. it's this, why is it different now? You know, <laughs> why is it different? Well, because we need know, to get rid of the Torah to fit our especially theology. <laughs> you go to Daniel and you see Daniel is uh, in exile, but he's praying during the time of the, there's no temple, but he's praying at the time of the sacrifice. So he's, his, his life is still informed. He's still praying, aiming towards Jerusalem when he's praying. Why, why, why not go back in time and say, Daniel, tap him on the shoulder. Dude, dude. Right. There's nothing there. Right. Dude, why are you praying right now? There's no pre, why are you imagining this temple? It's not there. They're, they're not doing sacrifices right now. You know, 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. When 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 Daniel and all those guys in Babylon are exactly when they're when when there's no temple, they didn't say, "Well, there's no temple here right now," which means therefore that the tour is done away. The the whole tour is done away with. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.